you know, there's so much beauty to, if I'm in this with my spouse, whether it's, you know, all in like we are together or, you know, the spouse is helping here and there. It's so cool to be able to say, here's where we want to be. So here's how we get there together. Right. Which is such a gift. Welcome to Broad Strokes, a paint contracting podcast for women by women. We know how much hard work and dedication it takes to run a successful painting business. And this is the place for us broads to BS all about it. Join your host, Tana Todd, and celebrate the achievements of women who are kicking ass in the world of paint contracting. Let's BS about it. Welcome, ladies out there, broads of the brush, to Broad Strokes. We are sitting down today with a fabulous Maggie Kuiper. All the way, did I say that right? You did. I was really I hoping you'd screw it up. Really? <laughs> oh, shoot. Awesome. I'm like, I'm like in this nice smooth roll into the intro. And I had yeah, to and I realized you never asked me how to... <laughs> <laughs> Whew. like like i just have this like ooh, in, my, in my chest but i have a thing about pronouncing names right because my name is really weird when you just read it it's like how do you say it? yeah. it's tana how do you how do you with the vowels anyway so i feel you tana right seems simple enough i have a tana in my life she's great oh wonderful so you have two tanas now Oh, I do. That's amazing. I call that T squared complex. What? What? <laughs> I have to make sure we tag her in this. Be like, hey, other Tana, hello out there. There's more than just you. It's me too. Right. <laughs> but let's let's roll it back. I'm sitting down today oh. with Maggie Kuiper, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. And it's so fun doing a podcast with a video element because things are a little different and wonky and we need computers. And, and where's your computer right now? <laughs> Other than when you have right now. Um, my com- oh, my computer's in Michigan <laughs> <laughs> with my business partner who has no cell phone service and is fishing with his brothers and dad. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> <laughs> My business partner is also my husband, for the record. For those of you just tuning in, uh, we've just met Maggie here. Yeah. Um, by the way, Maggie, tell us a little bit about your business here before we roll too far into our conversation. Perfect. Um, my husband, Matt, and I own Harpeth Painting, which is a residential and commercial painting company in Nashville. We have been... In business for about four years, but my husband has been in the commercial construction um, industry for 15 or something like that. (laughs) Awesome. Very cool. Well, I'm sure that there are some challenges coming along with having a business partner that's out. What did you say? Gallivanting? (laughs) He is gallivanting, I'm sure. (laughs) So is he working on a project or is he just kind of out, you know, having some vacay time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He takes an annual trip with his brothers and his dad. So they are um, fishing and probably drinking beer. Wonderful. That sounds like a perfect, all I know. perfect gallivanting escapade. Yeah. I am at home with the business and the three kids. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. Nothing's on fire. Everything's fine. <laughs> Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on. So he's gallivanting now. It's been a long season. I, I understand we, we're reaching the end of the, the busiest part of the season, maybe, depending on the weather. Are we reaching the end? Are we? <laughs> I don't know. What, appara- winter came knocking hard on the door of Denver a couple few weeks ago, and it definitely had us all thinking, oh, yeah, oh, no, yeah. winter's here. But I guess I guess the season's still burning strong. But when's your vacation? That's a great question. <laughs> I'm still trying to, that's not true. I went to Disney in February with my mom. So just me and my mom, no kids, adults doing Disney. So that's precious. Take that. I amazing. Well, you know, when there's not like a, you know, smaller mouths to feed, you know, $10 McDonald's French fries, which I've only been to Disney once. And I remember that it was like $9 for a medium French fry. Totally. (laughs) But that's wonderful. Which Disney did you go to? Florida one. Ah, uh, Disney World. 
Sounds right. There are there. You know what? There are moms out there that know much better than I do because I am not one of them. But I think it's Disney World. Yeah. Whatever's in Florida, we went. We conquered. Awesome. No kids. It was great. Did you get the Mickey Mouse ears? It's kind of like required. No, <gasps> didn't. They're expensive. Uh. I'm sure. You thought the fries were expensive. How about this little foam yeah, cap we yeah. stick on your kids' heads for forty five ninety nine? Until <laughs> you see the novelty alcohol drinks at Animal Kingdom. Oh, <laughs> probably about twenty dollars. Hey, listen. Yeah, I get all kinds of cool advertisements on my Facebook. Things from Wish that make absolutely no sense. But you know, something came through the other day, and it was it was a bra with wine like baggy in it like a stealth oh. horse bout like i'm like thinking like would i take that to a disneyland <laughs> maybe oh okay i'm following yeah i'm following <laughs> like stealth save yourself you know 20 bucks for a drink eh yeah about just a camelback or a camelback that works too that also works oh. i think they i don't know do they check those things Maybe I'm too stealth. That's weird. <laughs> oh, now they now yeah. No, yeah. yeah, they do. You're right. I think I think they do. do. Two steps ahead of the game. Uh, they not will that not check this though. <laughs> no. Not that this doesn't make me look like a complete alcoholic. <laughs> I was gonna say hiding alcohol is always a problem. So maybe we should just move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should, probably should. Anyway, Disneyland or Disney World is amazing and I'm glad you got to have that. But it's been, you know, what, what that's six months now. Might be time. Time for a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Go get a little leaf peeping in somewhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, oh, see fall colors. Yeah. Leaf peeping. Leaf peeping. Mm -hmm. That. Does that sound exciting? I wasn't sure what leaf peeping was. Oh. I didn't know if we were going like Adam and Eve on that or. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So let's roll that back. I guess. So leaf peeping is a thing. It's It's like this slang term for going to see pretty colors in the tree. <laughs> we have colors. Is this a paint podcast? <laughs> see, see, we're hitting it home. We're keeping it back centered on the subject at hand, colors and stuff. Yes. Leaf peeping. Got it. That's good. We're going to do that. That should be the color of the year. Leaf peeping. Right. I want to send you this and I'm going to make a note. Let's see. It's seven minutes and 20 seconds of this recording. I found a hilarious Pantone color swatch joke that uh, a digital marketing person made where they just basically boxed out different shades of the smoke from the wildfires and gave them um. pretty names like apocalyptic apricot. <laughs> and it's <laughs> awful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, end of times. Grage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know speaking of for the longest time the um the, the 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 color that you used in hospitals was kill em beige <laughs> I kid you not it was like the go-to like if you go through a hospital that like beigey color you see kill em beige i'm like really we couldn't have just done a one-off of that name kill em beige <laughs> It's like, you know, it's like, it's like in theater, like, go break a leg. Like, do you want to really? Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. mm, kill him beige. Awesome. Maybe you then you know this then. OK, so that kind of sea foamy, don't go too crazy in the padded room, bluish foam color. Mm. Are you tracking? It's like kind of a, 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 a thing that was popular in like horror films and, you know, asylum scenes and in, in movies and stuff. Oh. You think of it, it's kind of like this kind of icky sea foam. <laughs> I've seen it in a lot of old hospitals and, and films, but that's the shade of sea foam they put inside um, the, the van that I used to work in when I was in the army. And it was just this revolting color that I thought, mm. wow, if I wasn't insane before, I kind of feel like going insane now just looking at it. <laughs> now I will. I'm going to look it up. Oh, I'm gonna, that's funny. I'm going to call back to my old Patriot Air Defender buddies from the military and be like, whoa, what's the color again? <laughs> it's probably like the Britney, it's probably like the Britney blue that we put on everyone's porch ceilings now. I mean, it's probably full circle back to. Oh my you know. gosh, we might have. That's well, a southern thing. That's a oh, southern true. thing. Yes, yes. I'm a big fan of the kind of like robin's egg blues and and yeah. you know, pretty bright whites. Yeah, I got a thing for that. Mm -hmm. Is that your palette? It is. So my 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 shoebox size apartment, two hundred and ten whole square feet is um, mostly white and also robin's egg blue. 
in places. You know why they say that we like white now? Why is that? It's because we have so much um, stimulation visually with phones and screens and all that stuff. So now the whole push towards all the white is to like not have complexity when you look at your walls. And then the blue is your biophilic. Like it's your desire to have like outside come in your house because you're in like city. Yeah. Biophilic. Yeah, psychology of color. Mm-hmm. Tell me that's a real course you took. Might be. I was a psychology major. So it's a hundred percent a thing. That is so cool. Oh, you have such a diverse uh, background of education. I know it's crazy. Which sort of like <laughs> is a great segue to jump on into the part about back to paint oh, and your business is, <laughs> is you are sort of the non archetype of the paint contractor, um, lady boss, right? So you don't hey, paint. Your background is in I've business. I've never painted. Tell us about that. Literally never painted a day in my life. Um, I wouldn't even know how to start. Um, like I said, my husband, my background is uh, psychology and education. I was a high school athletic director and teacher for 10 years and volleyball coach. That's cool. Yeah. And my husband was in commercial construction. And um, so sidebar, my dad's an entrepreneurship professor. Ooh, so okay. it's like this like, perfect storm um, mm-hmm. that when I decide, I mean, an athletic director is not a job for a mom of three kids. I mean, that those hours. Yeah. <laughs> so when the kids came along and the business started rolling, I said, wait, I can help. Um, and I have my experience from my dad and his wisdom. And, um, so I kind of at first took over more so like the marketing and management finance side. Um, and then just slowly have started taking over the residential vision while he manages the commercial. I still have not gotten to wear a hard hat. It's my goal for 2021. That's that's a really hot look I hear in paint contracting. I, but apparently <laughs> you can't wear a new hard hat or you'll get made fun of because then it shows that you're not experienced on a construction site. So I got to I gotta like take my hard hat out back and hit it with a baseball bat a few times. I was going to say, first of all, if the hard hat served its purpose in like the most vis- like visual way possible, literally like a piece of like drywall falling on your head maybe that person needs to think about how they're running their site i don't know <laughs> Sam. and also it's okay to have a clean hard hat it means you care about your stuff right yeah. well well anyway may 21 it's a goal it's a goal may <laughs> may 21 th- or may of 21 there you go there you go i, I thought i didn't mean to talk over you but was that the goal you just said like maybe in 21 or what was that yeah in 2021 my goal is to have a need for a hard hat. Perfect. That's awesome. Okay. So running the business yes. side is literally like one of the the pillars of the Pro Painter Network, which you know we are affiliated with through Nick May, um, ah. and and we're helping paint contractors run their business better, right? Because that's usually kind of like the, the Achilles heel of a lot of folks that are just kind of venturing out into entrepreneurship for themselves or like they're ready, they have the people, they just, you know, they're missing that one link. And you had that in spades. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been super beneficial for, uh, you know, Nick and all of his talk of systems and processes Um, those are what come natural to us Mm -hmm. in the business side are those systems and processes. Um, so it's been, it's been a smooth transition that definitely has allowed for growth. Um, and it speaks to everything that pro painter network talks about. If you put them in place, you will grow efficiently. Right. Exactly. You you told me uh, that you run a, you said a $3 million a year business. That is Ah amazing that is so awesome like super high five thank you all the way in denver (laughs) there it is put it up um (laughs) nothing speaks louder than you know the the proof isn't being in the pudding right right so Uh, this is not because we know well my husband's a paint nerd so he does know about paint um he does not apply it as well as our painters but he knows every in and out no Mm -hmm. but that three million speaks to having those systems and that business salve that again it wasn't 
wasn't something that I came in with. I was a teacher. <laughs> I was an educator. <laughs> but we put we put the work in to learn it. I think you know, any experience is valuable experience. Being an educator is, is you know, learning co- to communicate and meet people halfway with what they can and cannot, you know, comprehend at that time and, and their personal growth path. Um, I've, I've served in education roles. I do that also on the weekends. I teach people how to ride motorcycles. And no way. Yeah, way. No, it's my cool moonlight job. Uh, <laughs> my husband's not allowed to ride a motorcycle. I understand it to be a very dangerous sport for many reasons. <laughs> but um but but back to the education piece though i'm sure that that has really played a, a big role in being able to communicate with your husband and work on a business mm-hmm. together and be successful because there's a lot of advice out there that says don't ever go into business with your partner it is doom you're sick you're, you know mm-hmm. you're digging your own grave it's not. tell us about it it's not doom but it sure takes a lot of um discipline, I think is the right word. Um, I think for us, especially we've had to create boundaries. Matt's really good at boundaries. Um, when dinner's done and the dishes are put away and family time happens, he doesn't let me talk about work. And I, I I mean, I'm a girl. So as all the girls listening, know your head's always spinning, you're laying in bed thinking about, you know, the job that's supposed to start tomorrow and whether or not the paint color was decided and all these details, but it is, I mean, he's very clear about, um, it's not the time to talk about it. And that is the simplest thing that has allowed us to not, uh, hate each other. (laughs) (laughs) It's so simple. Um, but it's just so easy when you live with your business partner. Um, I also have the tiniest rule. So Matt, we have a shop and his office is in the shop, but my office is at home. Cool. Um, But my rule is I have two lamps in my office and one of them stays on all the time. But if the other one's on, I'm working. And if it's off, I'm not. So again, same thing. You know, if I've wrapped up everything and my brain shut off at, you know, three thirty, four o'clock, Matt comes home from a bid and wants to ask questions. If that lamp's off, it's kind of like, you know, unless it's an emergency, send me an email. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Can you put that they in will. my calendar? So we'll, yeah. No. And it, we like, we will oftentimes like be cooking dinner and he'll be like, oh shoot, hang on. I'm going to send you an email because you, you don't want to forget. Right. But respecting boundaries, which is hard at home and with a, spousal business partner yeah that that, but that uh, but, so sorry go ahead you know it also had yeah it also has its benefits because you know just a few weeks ago we met with my dad this convenient um con- consult that we had <laughs> um and we talked about growth and where the business is going and finances and it's so awesome that our personal financial goals and our personal life goals can be how we shape the business. You know, there's so much beauty to, if I'm in this with my spouse, whether it's, you know, all in like we are together or, you know, the spouse is helping here and there. It's so cool to be able to say, here's where we want to be. So here's how we get there together. Right. Which is such a gift. There's nobody, you know, there's not an, an additional boss somewhere that's that's holding your partner mm. to a schedule that doesn't work with that, that may, you know, maybe mm. a pay that doesn't work with that. You guys are just really aligned. That is awesome to hear. Yeah. I mean, and it's a lifestyle, right? So we could grow real hard and try to hit, you know, 5 million or 10 million or whatever the next benchmark is. But we, we like our lifestyle. I mean, we like our pace and our and our freedom and you know and that's a decision that we can make again it's not an outside boss or a business partner right um with other goals you both have your hands on the the, the handle of the faucet and you get to change that flow yeah. at will that is such a great and empowering position to be in as a business owner yes but it this all came a lot of help from counselors. <laughs> yes, yes. So let's just put that. If you're in business with your spouse, or gosh, if you're in business with anyone, I can't speak volumes to. Or <laughs> each 
of our counselors helping us navigate that appropriately. Very good. Yes. Um, (laughs) Get somebody that you can communicate with outside of your spouse. Right. I see. I see a therapist as well, just for my own personal wealth and hell being, and and hell being, (laughs) hell being, well being. It is almost October. I'm just in that mindset. I'm just thinking about spooky shit. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) But yes, no, that helps me stay aligned and and make sure I keep my goals and you know the center of my focus and and all that stuff. You know, it's just it's good practice. It's good to to do a little self checking. Exactly. Awesome. So with this amazing and very successful business that you're running, you told me about a project that's going on right now that is just kind of super out there and a little bit different. Um, So tell me about this project. So um, about a year ago, um, Matt got some bid invites for a extremely large financial firm that's doing a build out at a high rise that's being built downtown. Um, So he started the process, submitted the bids. Um, It involved multiple interviews with the builder as well as the architect and client. Um, And then COVID hit. And we kind of assumed the project was dead. Um, You know, everyone's working from home. No one knew what was happening. It was March, April. We hadn't heard anything. Um, And then all of a sudden in about June... Uh, we got contacted from the builder um, and this contract is extremely large. I won't share the dollar amount, but it's extremely large. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, high rise, large. Got and, it. Check. Yeah. High rise, eight floors of a high rise. Wow. Um, yeah. And they, uh, it, it, the job was ours and they wanted to start in like two weeks. <laughs> so, uh, hello. Welcome back to business. Hello. Chop, chop. Right. <laughs> and we had not slowed down. I mean, since so much, uh, we do a lot of commercials, so we didn't slow much during COVID. Um, thankfully, Nashville kept rolling. But um, so all of a sudden, two weeks, we had to get a bond lined up, which for anyone listening, if you haven't had a bond lined up, good luck with that. Oh, no. And we got on the job site and each office of this eight floor, eight floor build out is, um, accented with felt wallpaper. So each office has multiple colors of felt wallpaper in the 35 or in the eight floors, there are 35 different colors of felt wallpaper in these various accent patterns. So, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, okay, felt. This is the felt. I'm like, like, this, like childhood felt. Like yeah, what you did. Like the, the little, little, like, what are you supposed to wear today, people? Yes. Mm-hmm. The or like little the puppets. Christmas trees. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so it's a company, uh, Phil's Felt, out of, and I, I believe they're, uh, this product is German, but I could be wrong. Based on the name, it sounds like it. So yeah, so we worked with this company and we had to order 35 samples. And then we also had to order, so we do wallpapering. Right. Um, very felt popular. Is but very popular. The number of pantries and ceilings we've wallpapered this year. Wow. Felt, if you get glue on the wrong side, it's ruined. Done. Whereas wallpaper, you get glue, you just wipe it. Yeah. Right, right, right. So we have had to order rolls on rolls on rolls, and I'll find you a picture if I can. Oh, please. Of sample felt <laughs> so that we can set up a shop for our guys to make sure we have the system down that they don't ruin, yeah, the actual felt. Oh, that is so, so smart. <laughs> meanwhile, Matt is at home on spreadsheets looking at plans, trying to figure out because each office has a different elevation and each office has a different pattern of color. So oh my gosh. it's figuring out how much we need of each of the 35 colors based on the elevations. And the, I mean, it is, the architect is extremely prolific. It's going to be a cornerstone project. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal, but um, it's one for the books. <laughs> that is amazing. I'm just like, I can't, is it, is it like a, like what, what's the pattern? I mean, can you describe it? just like one thing? Like, oh, I guess, I mean, like if they're different felt samples, like different colors per floor, is it like tiled or is it striped? I think, I think it's good. Like I said, I think each office 
individual office so like tiny little one desk office is going to have like a floor to ceiling stripe um of maybe maybe like three stripes in one office of three different colors and then the next office might just have two wider stripes okay i see yeah 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, it's um and they're all very like primary jewel tone colors it's it's just like i said it's it's one for the books. Bold. <laughs> this is going to be a, a, ma- a masterpiece, I'm sure. It, it really is. Um, we've we've really enjoyed. I mean, there's a lot of details to tend to on a project like that, and it is not for. I mean, our project manager is talk about losing sleep. <laughs> oh, uh, so so shout out to the project manager. Take a second for those. Shout out to Jose and his wife Lily because. <laughs> They are crushing it. And yeah, thank you. (laughs) That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing pictures of that. What's the estimated project completion date? Yeah, we'll let you know. (laughs) (laughs) It did. It was just like a June, like surprise, we're doing this thing. Yeah, maybe spring 2021. I'll get my hard hat and take a picture out there for you. That would be amazing. And then the gallery on your website is going to be to die for it's gonna have its own landing page yeah (laughs) yes it'll be its own marketing scheme absolutely absolutely absolutely. cool (laughs) that is so exciting oh my gosh so you really value your project manager and it really takes a team to to get a project like this and to win it all of a sudden so shouts to jose and lily um, didn't, did, did you get tamales the other day? You were telling me you got some delivery of tamales. Oh yes. Speaking of Lily. Yes. We, um, I, so my husband's, my father-in-law used to own a manufacturing company and once a year at Christmas, his favorite employee would bring him homemade tamales. And it's like, as long as I've known, so 15 years I've known Matt and his family and there's just like these legendary tamales and in the back of my brain, I was always kind of like, man, I mean, we employ a lot of people that probably know how to make tamales. Yeah. (laughs) And then all of a sudden two weeks, whatever, two weeks ago, uh, Lily showed up to our weekly team meeting and she had like two huge bins of tamales, one pork or no one chicken and one cheese. And I was like, I have arrived I have arrived. <laughs> you manifested Made that. Tamales. <laughs> it was like, and of all weekends, Matt's parents were visiting that weekend. Yeah. So they got to enjoy the tamales, which I feel like was such a cool symbolism oh. of like, your son has now arrived with his business and the tamales. Right? Full circle. Full circle. That's great. That's some like, we, yeah, the corner of the eye. I mean, <laughs> we ate the tamales. And then, uh, you know, I've been trying really hard to grow my spanish speaking skills oh great lily said she would invite me over and teach me how to cook the tamales and only speak to me in spanish that's a great way to learn that's two feet first right there i mean a lot of the guys think it's funny i'm trying to learn um that now they only speak to me in spanish and i'm like yeah this is great except i didn't understand that and this is an important project so let's back up (laughs) yeah Right. Como se dice is my favorite sentence. Como se dice, and that is. How do you say? Oh, como se dice. Como se dice. Como se dice. Then you fill in the blank. And I'll do the thing. Awesome, and I'm sure yeah. pointing goes a long way, like this thing and the the, the motion and the hand jive. Aquí, ahí, aquí, and here and there. Okay, good. Full hand fingers extended, and joined. Very military. Love that do that thing (laughs) that's that is amazing um i'm trying to do just some like brain you know skill building in my life you know um and spanish is definitely on my list of things like okay tana you live in america like so many people around you there's so much beautiful hispanic culture like you know so many people you really got to just try to speak some spanish all right it's time (laughs) all right so and in addition to that you know there's so much oh go ahead sorry go ahead well there's so much to you know I'm whoever's listening, whether they're on their own or hiring people, it's all about trust, right? I mean, we trust our people through and through, and we want them to trust us, especially because we don't know anything about paint. Right. So this is a different. Yeah, no, for sure. (laughs) Um, And I, 
I just think the smallest thing I could do is try to be able to communicate to them, you know, right. and learn what they, we ask Jose and Lily all the time. What do your guys, what do they want? What's going to make them feel supported? What's going to make them feel, um, so we're really just trying that's and it is good brain exercise, but I don't feel like with three kids and a business, I need any more brain exercise, <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. Well, that's good. And you're right. Trust is, is integral to having successful business. And there's that educator in you there coming halfway. Mm -hmm. It's the least we could do, the least you could do. And honestly, more power to you. That's amazing. Thanks. So awesome. We'll see. Oh, well, yeah, we'll have Gracias. to do, we're going to have to, we're going to like check up with you in like six months and be like, all right, cool. So I'll have to learn some things and ask some questions and hopefully we'll have like a sort of yes. flowing conversation for like five minutes. <laughs> How's the felt? How's the Spanish? <laughs> yeah, how's the felt? How's the Spanish? Amazing working with felt. That I'm just trying to think, like, what what else can you glue to a wall that people would like? I've heard of leather tiles before. Mm -hmm. We just removed some acoustical pan paneling at a house. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we could go down the leather route. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, possibly or um one of my favorite design things are the um the it's not corrugated but it's it's like stamped copper tiles and plates that you put in like old diners yeah. and swanky mm -hmm. speakeasies mm -hmm. to kind of cover ducting and provides for that like that warm industrial look that's such a fun yeah um, that's cool it's fun and you can just use a great bonding primer and paint it that's amazing <laughs> Easy peasy, right? Like that. <laughs> just, just like that. Amazing. So you have your goal to wear your hard hat in spring. I believe that you can get there. It sounds like you have the support network and, and the people that have the same vision, which is so important. Do you have any other dream Absolutely. projects you've ever thought like, oh, someday I'd love to do this type of business or, you know, do you take kind of just like a, a service approach? What do you got any got any grand schemes cooking up in there? I mean, I think with the whole psychology background, the, the, the psychology of design and color is definitely something I'm enjoying exploring with the residential route. We've got a lot of awesome designers we're working with, um, and more so than just showing up to paint, like actually learning and mm -hmm. growing with, um, we just finished up at a 13 month long project with a significantly famous country star we are in nashville uh-huh um, yes so some more projects like that are in the pipeline and i think that's going to be really fun to to see i sent you a picture of one of them but i can't you know nda <laughs> yep 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 i was gonna say i, I but, guess i should ask when does that expire like do you get to say ever or no i know <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question, but we repost when they post. How about that? <laughs> All right. Well, make sure you check them out on the Instagrams. Harpeth, it's Harpeth Painting on Instagram, correct? LLC. Harpeth Painting. Harpeth Painting LLC. Awesome. On the Instas. Check them out there. And you can find them also at harpethpaintingllc.com. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. I'm Absolutely. just making sure. Considering I look at that website frequently for other reasons. Um, you know, I do your marketing analyses, right? Oh, are you that girl now? <laughs> no, I've been that girl. Okay. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I was, I didn't want to tell you yesterday. We do a little test call before we record our sessions. And, um, I was going to tell you then, and then I thought, no, 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 I'm going to catch her online. But, but no, yeah, actually like monthly reports, those are coming down the hey. pipeline here soon. <laughs> Shout out to IMA media. We, uh, we changed up our website with y'all and we, I've had nothing but great success. We get so many compliments on our website, everything. We've added some videos and it was so easy to just email y'all. Here's our video. And it was on the website in like 30 seconds. I mean, it has been, and that's, I mean, that's, that's going to set us apart. You know, that's going to make us exactly what we're saying. Marketing the higher end people that care about and result. Oh, oh you good bet. job, I may. Oh, thank you. And I'm gonna I'm going to um, pass that kudos to a fabulous individual out there. His name is Tyler LaChapelle. 
Tyler LaChapelle yes. um, has recently departed the IMA marketing team here with Nick May um, to pursue his own business. He's starting his own thing with tattoo artists and managing their websites. He does incredible work. He is a Wait. super nice and intelligent and, and really, really just fun guy to work with. It was a pleasure, and he was the person that did all mm -hmm. of the building on your site. So kudos to you, Tyler LaChapelle. Make sure we tag you in this. And um, if, you're on the, if you're in the Connecticut the area and you're a tattoo artist... You should look him up. He'll help you with your uh, your website and marketing. That's awesome, Tyler LaChapelle. I don't think he has a website. TylerLaChapelle.com. No. We'll kick you those digits and stuff um, <laughs> in the description of the show uh, and on the YouTube when we post this up. But, Maggie, it has been an absolute pleasure BSing with you on the Broad Strokes podcast. Yeah. Uh, I'm totally inspired by your your entire methodology and and your boundary setting of running a business with your partner, that is something that I think so many people attempt and fail, and it's really wonderful to hear and to know somebody who is succeeding in that arena. So well done. Thanks, girl. You are, you're killing it. You're out there making that money and living the best life. Um, it's been a pleasure again. And make sure you check her out on her social feeds and her, her website. And we'll catch you all later on the Broad Strokes podcast. Thanks. Have a lovely day. Thanks for tuning in to Broad Strokes, a paint contracting podcast for women by women. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for behind the scenes content, guest galleries, memes, and more. If you want to be on the show, shoot us an email to broadstrokes at imamedia.com. And until next time, I'm your host, Tana Todd, and it's been a pleasure BSing with you today. Sponsored by Benjamin Moore and Estimate Rocket. <laughs>